Google has been on a bit of a shipping frenzy lately and recently have dropped probably one of the biggest game changers for AI image generation and editing for free. Some are calling it a Photoshop killer. I'm gonna be a little more on the measured side here, but it is very impressive and very powerful. And more than that, video is on the way. So today let's take a dive in to see what it can and cannot do. Plus I've got some tips and tricks and everything you need to know about how to start using it for free today. In a recent update, Google has made Gemini 2.0 truly multimodal. So it understands not only text, images, audio, and video, but it can also generate and edit, well, images, at least for now. And that is something that we have been waiting quite a while for. In fact, that's actually a bone that I still have to pick with OpenAI. As when Dolly 3 was released, they never outright said it, but they did heavily imply that you would be able to do this. As I'm sure most of you are aware, if you prompt something like create an image of a skateboarder doing a kickflip, something you should always yell out your car window when you see a group of skateboarders, you'll probably end up with an image in the neighborhood of what we're looking for. But if you follow up with any kind of modifications, uh, you know, you will end up with a completely different scene. It's a good looking kickflip though. Well, Gemini 2.0 has broken the doors wide open on that. And there's a lot of different use cases here. Now, a pretty big note here and something that has been causing some confusion. Uh, this new feature isn't taking place in like regular Gemini. Instead, you'll have to go to Google's AI studio. I'll have a link to that down below. You should be able to log in if you have a Google account. The other thing to note is that AI studio is meant for prototyping and experimenting. So it, it's a little less user friendly than say a fully dedicated platform. That said, it isn't super overwhelming. There are some nuances. We'll go over those as we move along. First off under model here, you'll definitely want to have Gemini 2.0 flash image generation uh, toggled on. And and as you can see here uh, under our rate limits, we basically have, you know, 10 requests per minute that we can issue with a maximum of 1,500 requests per day. Not too shabby. Kicking off with some tests as a straight image generator, we will check in with our man in a blue business suit who we last saw on a train. Well, that train has now dropped him off at an abandoned station somewhere in the desert. Uh, AI Studio is obviously using ImageN3 as its image generator. And I gotta say, I've been using ImageN3 quite a bit lately and I, I continue to be impressed with it. Its prompt coherence is really pretty stellar. And especially when it comes to like this sort of cinematic styled stuff, I mean, aesthetically, I think it's it's been really on point. But the real superpower here is the ability to continue on with this scene with just some relatively simple prompt. Uh, so a reverse angle is simply create a reverse angle shot where we see the back of the man in the blue business suit in the foreground and the train departing in the background. I then followed that up with a close up shot of our man in the blue business suit looking concerned. We still have our same guy in the same aesthetic style, relatively in the same location as well. And then our little sequence ends with a hungry wolf looking at our man in the blue business suit. Man, this guy just cannot catch a break, can he? And of course that makes things extremely easy to take to any video generator, uh, Luma Labs in this case, and you know create a quick little short. Now, as much as I like ImageN3, I'm sure you feel very much the same way. I don't want to exclusively use it. Uh, luckily for us, AI Studio will accept any kind of image. So tossing in a mid-journey generated image of Captain Renfield, uh, I just asked for it to give me an alternate, but cinematic angle for this image. And very quickly, it returns with this, which is kind of crazy, uh, considering that this is, yeah, it's our shot just from a different vantage point. Captain Renfield remains Captain Renfield. Our background character is still our background character. We have added in some details, obviously, on the tavern uh, on the side. And I did say cinematic, and AI Studio was just like, well, I'm going to give you two one then. So actually, you know, props to you for that. Now, I will say that our initial image definitely comes in a bit on the low res side. Not a huge deal, as you can take this image and bring it over to any one of the image upscalers and you know, you'll be in business in no time. I continued on with a close up shot of Captain Renfield and indeed got a very solid close up shot of him. Now here is where things start to get a little bit on the tricky side because once you start pushing things past three or four generations, the model just starts to lose a little bit of its overall fidelity. Uh, for example, this was a, you know, an additional shot of Captain Renfield drinking from a wooden mug. It's not necessarily bad, but as you can see, we are definitely beginning to lose fidelity in the textures, not only on the wooden mug itself, but you know, in Captain Renfield's dreadlocks and skin textures and whatnot as well. 
Again, because AI Studio is not really a platform and there is no like reasoning in terms of the directions that you're giving it, uh, it, it, yeah, it just tends to get a little on the stupid side. So the solve for that is to reprompt with your initial image just to give AI Studio kind of a, a refresher on what we're aiming for here. Now, that said, it also has like a weird reverse goldfish memory uh, in that I took that image and just said, give me this shot. But from the left side, it did give me the attempt, but also remembered, hey, aren't we doing something with that wooden mug? So a few handy tricks with that, taking this image of this dude that you are clearly going to pay a toll to before you cross that bridge, and then giving it the prompt to have the figure holding a large sword. We, we do indeed get him holding the large sword. It's, I'm not necessarily in love with the output there. Uh, you can simply come back up and hit this edit button where you can then reprompt, uh, in this case, have the figure in the same pose, but in his right hand, he's holding the large sword uh, and then just rerun it from there. And indeed, we do end up with our guy holding a large sword. Uh, yeah, sword looks contextual, obviously, to the setting. Uh, lighting on it is correct. Yeah, I mean, this looks great. The other handy thing that we can do is that we can actually take this image and then branch it out from here. This ends up creating a new thread that preserves our previous iterations, uh, and then we can muck with this a little bit more. AI Studio definitely works very well with you know actual photos as well. Here is a photo of Bad Kitty, who has been mentioned on the channel a number of times the cat is crazy uh but just giving it the prompt give the cat orange fur we end up with uh good kitty maybe i don't know uh, that cat looks like it'd be crazy too now one place that this is going to be very useful is utilizing these images as keyframes in ai video uh it's it's no secret that you know like fight sequences in ai video are always a bit of a disaster and while I don't necessarily have this completely dialed in yet, I think that this will illustrate the potential. Uh, we begin with this image uh, generated again up in mid journey, and then uh, simply giving it the prompt, give me the next pose for these fighters in this Kung Fu action sequence. We end up with this, which fine. Uh, and then for a third image, uh, I just had the woman give a kick to the man's chest. So taking those three frames over to Runway, which I believe is the only video generator that allows for a beginning, middle, and end keyframe, and just giving it the prompt cinematic kung fu fight sequence, fast motion, we end up with a result like this, which admittedly is not great. But again, I didn't do any post work on those keyframes beforehand. Um, yeah, there are definitely problems here. But even as is, adding in some speed ramping and maybe like a handheld camera preset, we definitely end up with something that is much more coherent than our usual AI video fight sequences. So that's definitely something that I will be playing around and experimenting more with. As just a quick note here, my thought is uh, to actually begin choreographing off of the first generated image, as I think that will lead to less overall decoherence, uh, at least in that opening frame. Now, one place that this is going to be an absolute game changer for is creating trained Laura characters. Uh, for example, taking this image of a red haired, uh, like Red Sonia esque inspired Viking warrior, dropping her in and just giving it the prompt to give me a back view of this character. We indeed have a back view. Uh, give me side views of this character. Give me this character running. Give me this character standing in front of a burning village with vengeance in her eyes. Obviously, we can continue on getting lots of different reference material for this character that we can then bring in and, you know, train for a consistent character. Now, from some light experimenting, I have found that uh, AI Studio isn't necessarily great at combining images. For example, uh, giving this location and then adding in the prompt, she walks up the path with determination in her eyes. We end up with this as an output, which, uh, you know, isn't necessarily great. I mean, it does work, but maybe isn't the best use case. That said, there are plenty of other use cases. And that brings us to community outputs. Friend of the channel and international man of mystery, Bala was to do, seen here on the TED stage, kind of blew my mind with this one, uh, taking this image and then running it through AI Studio to get, uh, you know, 3D wireframes out of it. That's kind of crazy. And look, while this is not truly 3D, I think this does go to show exactly how good the model is at, well, a subject separation and, you know, scene and depth understanding. Victor M had a super cool idea here, taking a number of sprite assets and then basically handing it over to AI Studio and saying like, cook with these, bake me something. And indeed, you know, we ended up with uh, a game level. 
Min Choi shows off that you can do, you know, product replacement type stuff uh, within AI Studio. Uh, it's funny because there are a number of platforms that are paid platforms that I've seen specializing in this. And yeah, I mean, here you can now do it with Gemini 2.0 completely for free. ABKI work shows us that we can use it to fix AI hands as well. So AI fixing AI hands. I mean, that tracks. And finally, Yumish points out that it does a really good job at maintaining overall consistency of style, like this kind of like sketchy style, do an add-in of a man working at a computer. And indeed that man working at a computer is stylistically consistent with the rest of the image. To be honest, this is probably just the beginning of what is possible with Gemini 2.0. In fact, testing catalog has uncovered that video generation is on its way. They've also indicated that a canvas type feature will be coming as well. Uh, obviously we're all sort of more interested in the video generation side. Uh, and they note that uh, the feature could launch between between one and four weeks based on historical patterns. Now, what that will end up looking like, I'm not sure. Will it be the VO Turbo model that we saw integrated into YouTube Shorts or will it be, you know, the full VO2 model? Obviously, fingers crossed that it will be the full version, but I guess we'll find out soon enough and I will definitely make a video about it as soon as it drops. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.